Hi everyone! So in this video we will talk about a paper that I read recently about slow breathing. Gert Leroy asked for some relevant information on tidal breathing on Facebook. So I started googling to find something to help, but after reading through this article, I found it very interesting, so I thought to make a video on it and try to explain what it talks about. We have known of tidal breathing so far for our breathe-ups in freediving. This is normal respiration with a relatively constant rate using inspiratory and expiratory volumes, the tidal volume. So it's breathing like we're sleeping, basically. Optimal breathing requires active control of the diaphragm, the muscle that is most important for us such that during inhalation, the lower ribs stay low and only expand to the sides, while our abdomen expands instead of the chest. Breathing less frequently alone would lead to hypercapnia, which would activate chemoreceptors and the body would respond with an increase in our breath rate, which is hyperventilation. So we have to accompany the reduced rate with increased volume, and we do that by controlling the diaphragm. What this study found is that with breathing at about six breaths per minute, so five seconds in and five seconds out, we have a plethora of health benefits. So let's see what they are. First of all, respiratory. An appropriately reduced respiration rate reduces the chemoreflex response to hypercapnia and hypoxia. Also, decreasing our respiration rate and increasing our tidal volume leads to improved ventilation efficiency, and it also reduces alveolar dead space. The dead space in the alveoli is air that doesn't reach the alveoli and also air that enters them poorly. So with reduced respiration, we have less dead space. With increased respiration, we have more dead space. Cardiovascular system. Slower breathing causes our blood pulse fluctuations to synchronize with the heartbeat's rhythm. It also causes an increase in efficiency of venous return in the heart, especially with diaphragmatic breathing, because the diaphragm, this dome muscle, is connected to and supports the heart. Cardiorespiratory. Slow breathing seems to trigger the baroreflex, this reflex involves receptors that monitor arteri arterial sorry, blood pressure. When it detects raised blood pressure, it activates the parasympathetic system to lower the heart rate, and it also suppresses the sympathetic system. This leads to further lowering the heart rate. Slow breathing also increases something called respiratory sinus arrhythmia which enhances pulmonary gas exchange efficiency and minimizes energy expenditure, which is supported by the fact that RSA maximizes during sleep, rest, etc. The theory around RSA is that it may serve as a neural pacemaker, regulating our cardiorespiratory rhythm through a connection with the phrenic nerve, among others. The phrenic nerve is important because it connects the brain to our diaphragm and controls breathing. Let's move on to the autonomic nervous system. The parasympathetic rest and digest nervous system regulates the heart rate via acetylcholine release, whereas the sympathetic fight or flight regulates it via the release of norepinephrine. Slow breathing leads to a parasympathetic balance and an increase in vagus nerve activity, increasing acetylcholine and reducing norepinephrine release. It doesn't reduce the sympathetic activity, but it is capable of achieving an optimal sympathovagal balance and enhancing the autonomic reactivity to physical and mental stress. So what are the implications to freediving specifically? Besides the fact that using this type of breathing is evidently beneficial to us, as with everyone, perhaps we can or should modify our breathe-up routine and enhance it from tidal breathing to slow breathing, following this paper's suggestion of the optimal 6 breaths per minute. Food for thought. It's still an interesting paper, and I'm, I'm very happy to share it with you. 
Thank you for watching. Bye bye.